All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Sunday matinee. I have Jen and Shannon from the band Cancelled Stamps with me today, and uh, we're gonna do some we're gonna do some songs. <laughs> Yay. I mean, yeah. at least that's the plan. <laughs> that's our plan. That's, <laughs> we're thrilled to be here. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, one of my things is technically not a song. Oh. <laughs> well, that's intriguing. Right? Because <laughs> some people are very pedantic. The song must have words. Oh. Yeah, songs don't always need to have words. Uh-uh. <laughs> not, in, not in my world. <laughs> Um, okay, so my first song I'm going to start off with is called The Wife of the Khan, and there was, there was a photograph floating around uh, in 2022, early 2022 that was purported to be the last queen of Mongolia, and um, wow. it turns out it was actually a still from a film about her. It wasn't actually a picture <laughs> of her, but, oh, wow. uh, but she, had, she actually had a, a like kind of, inter- I mean... Like what little there is known about her is actually kind of interesting. So she was, she was a commoner that married, um, that married the king of Mongolia, who was who was a llama, and um, and she married him basically in the last year of his life, um, and he was very sickly at the time. But you know she went from she went from living in a village to living in a palace and then she was she was ruler afterward but it was in the it was in the 30s which you know was right about the time that the the mongolian communist revolution was happening so she was she was deposed by the rebels and eventually eventually executed um yeah it's a roller coaster life (laughs) yeah um but she was she was leading i mean I say rebels, but but it ended up being that the um, that the commun since the communists did take over the country that that she was in charge of the rebels against the communists. So like it was, they went from you know they went from being the the anti rebels to the <laughs> actual rebels. <laughs> it's rebels all the way down. <laughs> um, but yeah, this song ended up kind of being a meditation on I don't know the idea of rebirth or something that sounds awesome since she uh kind of had three different lives in a very short span of time She's leaving the court As gentle as when he laid down his sword A queen now in name and a little more was not a death no more of a burden anyhow a lifetime shed when at last he left an exile and a rebel now Moon to the earth. 
dinosaur And the voices in the fog disperse As gentle as when she laid down her crown Should she pray for ender for rebirth Lovely. That's really nice. <laughs> it's neat to know the sort of backstory before yeah. hearing it too. Yeah, the lyrics are a little a little vague on the backstory. So, like like I said, it was a little less. It was a little more of a meditation on it than maybe a story, even if it has a story. <laughs> <laughs> I like the imagery of the bound to earth, like a, like the moon. Oh no! Oh, that's your water. It's my water, but don't okay. worry, it's got a lid on it, so <laughs> it's sealed. <laughs> That's why I always drink out of a water bottle because right. I'm a clumsy person. At least it wasn't the tea. You know, <laughs> no, I put the tea priorities. way over there. <laughs> priorities. <laughs> All right. Um, what are you going to start with? So we're going to do first a song called <laughs> Dreams Into Dust, um, yeah. which is sort of uh, one that we wrote a few, I don't know, about three, four years ago, something now. Yeah, I don't know. It's all, it's all a blur. <laughs> COVID made everything not. I yeah. don't know what time has passed, what day it is. <laughs> we recorded it during COVID, I think. Did we? Yeah, when did we record at Magpie Cage during COVID? Yes. Yeah. We had right. to wear masks the whole time. Right, right. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, not when we were doing our vocals. Right? <laughs> <laughs> this is one sort of that first, uh, your first love that didn't work out kind of thing that you yeah. still sometimes think about. That's the... That's Aww. the backstory. That's the backstory, yeah. yeah. You know. <laughs> You'll hear it. You'll hear it in there. Now you know our backstory. <laughs> All right, ready? I think so. Things like men 
So Jen has to do like <clears throat> three other parts that she doesn't normally <laughs> when we do it acoustic because usually we're doing it with a you know four piece bands and yeah. uh, Dee does um, a lot of her other vocals and backing vocals. I see. So Jen has to do her own and Dee's and sometimes add in a bass line here yeah. and there when we're doing yeah, it like, acoustic. The songs I, change a little bit amazing. when we do it. Acoustic. I I am I am like honestly like amazed so many different things you can do at the same time. <laughs> right? Right? Right. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah. She's pretty incredible. <laughs> <laughs> well, Shannon uh, wrote most of that one. I mean, we work on all of the songs together as a band for them to come into yeah. their fruition. But I think it's a beautiful, lovely. Nice. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna ask about the collaboration on the songs. So, is, and and I, I think you said some of the other band members write too. Um, so typically, how it's worked up to this yeah. point is, I will write. If, if it's a song that I'm singing lead on, it's one that I came up with the general idea for. Mm -hmm. And then the same for yeah. the ones that Shannon sings lead on. And then, so we'll write a basic like progression, melody, that kind of thing, and then bring it to each other or bring it to the full band and work on the arrangement, different parts. And a, a lot of times the sort of base of what we've come up with ends up being dramatically different from the finished <laughs> product by the yeah. time everybody's had their input. Yeah. Um, so... Even though we come up with the kind of base of the songs, I think of them all as, as fully canceled stamp songs and yeah. don't like try to have any kind of ownership like And a lot of the like the backing vocals like Dee will bring in her ideas, like she brings in the bass line, Pete brings in the drums. You know, we may have an idea of what we want it to sound like. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that it's what it should sound like in the end. So we've definitely stampsify it. <laughs> right. Is right. is it is it pretty even across the board or or is it I mean Sometimes, I, I mean, I, or I would say even like a lot of times in bands, there is usually like someone who who seems to have a stronger opinion about about the arrangement in general. Well, I mean, I mean, I mean, so, look, I'm just saying there's a person in this room who plays all the instruments. Yeah. So. Well, I think that there, you know, there's. Everybody, everybody contributes and everybody's opinions bring value. So I don't yeah. think any of us try to dictate too much about what happens because that there's a risk in, in that of stifling other people's voices mm -hmm. and, and the songs then suffer from that. But we did both watch the um, the, Be the Beatles <laughs> the Beatles documentary that was on like last year, or whatever the eight hour thing, and then uh, had differing opinions about. I was like, man, Paul's such an asshole, and Jen was like, I, I really, I really identified with Paul. <laughs> yeah, I so you know, somebody, somebody's got to be the Paul. But I mean, it's also I think it's important. It is important to to have you know, to have somebody to kind of guide things, but also at the same time to not stifle other people's contributions and opinions. And I think we do an all right job of maintaining that balance. I think we do a great job of that. I think a lot of times, um, <clears throat> Jen's been doing a lot, music a lot longer than I have. So I think she comes to the band more frequently with a fully formed idea. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that's something that she does less and less now, like over time, like, you know, at first, I think it was hard for all of us. Like you have an idea of how a song's supposed to go. I've never written with other people. Like I think, you know, so I come in and it's hard. Like you're suddenly things change and you have to let go of that egg of the song and let it become the band's song. And I think Jen does a very good job. There's definitely times when there's no, this is the vision. And I think it's right when you have that feeling you, you we, we as a band also need to be okay with that. Like yeah. sometimes that's a vision and we just have to be okay with it. And sometimes I need to recognize when it's time to like, yeah. Be flexible. So, we balance. Yeah, we, ba we balance. Thank you. We balance. Yeah. I think we've, we've done. We've learned how to balance those yeah. things. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't really do any co-writing until until Joe got me into February album writing months. So I do. I do like half my writing in February now. But mm -hmm. but like, um, we need to start doing that. Yeah, you do. Yeah, everyone should do it. Yes. I'll remind <laughs> you next yes, year please. again. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. Yeah, I mean, 2012 was my, I think it might have been my first experience co-writing a song with anyone. I mean, and and up until that point, pretty much everything I had done had very minimal input from other people, unless it was an instrument that I just didn't have any idea on. And, you know, I'd just let, I'd just let someone do whatever they wanted, unless I had something that I really wanted to hear. But, um... But yeah, co co writing lyrics is can be can be super hard and and 
I one year one year me and Joe like uh, like I gave Joe this like fully formed song, <laughs> and like it had a, it had a, everything, and I said I think I could use a bridge, and then he like rewrote the whole all, like, all, <laughs> like all of it, and it ended up being a much better song, and he yeah. ended, and and I mean to the point where at the end of it I'm like I'm like I'm not sure I wrote any of the. I don't, I'm not sure I like wrote any of the <laughs> any of the lyrics, most of the chord progression, except for one one thing in the chord progression that I absolutely insisted on, and it took like three hours to convince <laughs> Joe to do it. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I I don't know, like after I did that, I just <laughs> I don't know, I kind of didn't want to write on my own as much anymore. And but it's, it's fun it, to have that other person to to you know I'll bring something. We usually don't co-write lyrics so much, but sometimes the phrasing is wrong, mm -hmm. and someone else needs to be like, "You need to let go of that word." Like, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. okay to let go of that one word that you keep wanting to throw in, and it changes the song in such a, a, a better way. Or maybe your, your verses are in the wrong order, and they don't make as much sense as you think they do. And that's something that can be so helpful to have a fresh pair of eyes, like you get things stuck in your head that they're supposed to be a certain way, even though it's not working. And then for someone to just be like, well, if you just flip those two verses, you'll be okay, kid. You know, it's, it's, right. it's yeah. helpful. Yeah. I mean, like Joe is much better at writing choruses than I am. So like, it's, it's, it's got that natural hook thing going yeah. on. In his yeah. Brain. And, and I mean, also, it's also like, I'll hand him something and he'll be, he'll be like, there's no chorus in this. And I'm like, well, that's the chorus. And he's like, that's not a chorus. <laughs> it's like, so it's like, it, it's also, I mean, it, it's also very, I, I think, very difficult to get to a point where you, like, trust people mm -hmm. enough to take their word for it. Yeah. Well, I mean, That's what we're lucky. We've been friends a long time. And, you know, like Pete, our drummer, I've known since I was in high school, you yeah. know, and Dee joined our bands. I mean, how many years have we been together now? I think we formed in, like, 16 or 17. Yeah. So when, you know, when one of them says, ah. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, it's coming from a or, place of love. Right? You know, we, I, we've, I've brought songs to the band, and like, literally, like my bandmates have cried because they were moved by the song, and that Aww. is also just as endearing to, to and rewarding to have yeah. that moment where you're like, yeah, somebody, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, so it's a nice feeling. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a song written in 2014. And finally released last year. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, this, this is called Won't Grow Here. And it's actually based on a short story I wrote a long time ago, back when I thought I wanted to be a fiction writer. And um, about a family that is stuck inside a castle that's being besieged. And... Oh my God! This sounds terrible. <laughs> have, have you heard? Have you heard yes. my band's um, <laughs> motto? Pretty music about ugly things. Hi, I'm John. Yeah. Nice to meet you, Sharon. <laughs> um, but um, the song's a little more. I don't know. Directly about war. Like it just kind of used the story as an as an inspiration. Um, and it has a it has a a sister song that I might have played on stream otherwise. That that is more directly related to the story. But um, yeah, don't go to war, kids. It's not good. I don't know. I was still young when I drove the plow. Her hair was like fire when we took our vows. Violets in spring, apples in the fall. Tomatoes in summer and home again all. And I made a bed on a pallet on the straw Raised for her walls and a son and then one more Violets in spring, apples in the fall Tomatoes in summer and home again all
and fall like leaves from the trees. You can talk as you please, no one talks of peace. And whiskey and bread, apples in the fall, tomatoes in summer and home again all. And I pulled the cart straight on the road, and I built a fine fire from the coals. We sold our hearts, but desire won't grow here, and we burned like gold. Hard in the marrow, make this body a shield from an arrow. Hard in the bone, hard in the marrow, make this body a shield from an arrow. Nice. I feel like I want to applaud. Like. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah, it's a little, it's a little unusual. <laughs> To, to just pretend there are people out there. Well, we had to get used to that during the pandemic when we, we would do all these live streams for like, you know, raising money for local bars or people yeah, yeah. or whatever. And oh, yes, like, it's weird. Yeah, you finish and it's like silence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how the Fells Point streaming came about. Mm, right? yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, I guess we should talk about Fells Point because yeah. you guys, I mean, you guys are like pretty big in the community and like, I. I, I think the first time I became uh, aware of you was that you hosted the Clam Jam. <laughs> was, Did we? What? Didn't you host the? Mm -mm. Didn't you host a jam session in Fells? No, no. I don't know. Some must have been some other really hot chicks. I know. Oh. It wasn't us. <laughs> mm -hmm. We 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 were we. Um, I feel like the we, Hoot Nanny, and then also. Uh, did you guys start Cat's the Eye. Hoot Nanny? No, no. no. that's been no. going on for decades. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Shannon had been going there for years before yeah. I even met her, and she was like, "You should come to this thing." Um, when we became friends, but yeah, I think we sort of found our way into the Fells Point scene because of Fells Point streaming. Yeah, um, I don't know how we ended up doing our first Fells Point streaming. Mick. Oh, uh, our first Fells Point streaming was. Uh, I guess Jen must have reached out to us or some somebody. We were yeah. asked to be included, and we were grateful for the opportunity. And then after a year or however long during <laughs> COVID when that went on, when things started happening in person again, we were very fortunate to be invited to play our first Cat's Eye show with Mick. Yeah, Mick Brierly. Um, Brierly, who is amazing. Yep. If you if you out there watching don't know uh, of him, please you check should. him out. Yeah. And you're in Baltimore, because if you're not yeah. in Baltimore, right. I don't know how you're going to hear him. I mean, come yeah. to Baltimore. I don't know. He has a Facebook, yeah, he, and he plays. He plays out in, or whatever, in but yeah, other places yeah. in the county and stuff. At any rate, so that's how we sort of fell into getting to play in Fells, and um, you know, primarily at Cat's Eye and Bertha's and occasionally. Bertha's, yeah, um, but our full band, because there's kind of two scenes. There's the cover band scene, and there's the original music scene. Yeah. So Cancel Stamps is typically more of like a Joe Squared, Metro Gallery, Auto Bar, um, Epo, Reverb, which yeah. is you know, kind of. Around. We've done a few festivals too. Yeah, and a few yeah, festivals: Fells Point Festival. Fest, uh, Maryland Music City, Maryland Festival, for yep. a few years. Um, but yeah, so we're we're grateful for any opportunity to play our music. And I think what's neat, which was really kind of Shannon's idea, was to start incorporating covers <laughs> into canceled stamps so that we yeah. can bridge the gap between the two scenes. Yeah, and it's really to, difficult. Like, people are people love when we play like we do cover birds. And when we play our original, like, canceled stamp songs, people are like, we love that, and then they want to hear it, and which is great. But, like, people don't come out necessarily in support of all original music. It's more yeah. difficult to get a crowd if you're just playing all your songs. Yeah, and, and, I mean, I don't know that I've talked about this on stream, but I've certainly talked about it with friends that um, a lot of the support for original music in Baltimore, I mean has not recovered no not and, from the pandemic and and it was already i mean it was already a little sickly let's mm -hmm. say compared to what it was in around 2010 or so i mean there was a, there was a point where rolling stone 
I mean, bless their hearts, <laughs> um, called Baltimore City like the the best indie music scene in the oh, U.S. Wow. And I, I mean, when was that? I, it was it was late two thousands, I think. It was wow, like before some, I lived here. Yeah, <laughs> I mean. And I mean, it was a time when like J. Roddy Walston still lived in Baltimore and he's in Nashville now. I think he came from Nashville, like moved here or something. But um, but like Future Islands had, had oh, started right, around right, that right. time. Like like we had, you know, we had several legit bands that are uh, why Oak was still here yeah. before, before. I don't know if Jonah's moved back, and but Andy, I'm pretty sure, is in is in Texas now. And, you know, I, but I mean. We we had several legit bands that were on major labels, and, yeah. and you know, so it wasn't it wasn't the most ridiculous thing to say. I mean, it's not it was not the benches that say greatest city in America, which <laughs> you know, as much as I love Baltimore, that that is a that is a shade <laughs> that is a shade too too uh, too far for me. <laughs> but I mean. But yeah, I mean, I I think we had already we'd already lost several venues before the pandemic even hit, yeah. and then, and now like I've gone to shows where there's like nobody there in support of bands who are frankly like some of the best bands I've ever seen, and and it costs those bands money. Yeah. Like that's the thing. A lot of times, like you go to play these places, and you know you go and you support the venue, and you buy dinner or whatever, and you don't make any money. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah. there's three bands and you got to split the twenty dollars from the tour. Right? Yeah, you buy mean, yourself like, a couple of beers yeah. and you know then all of your profit is gone, yeah. and that doesn't even account for the, you know, the pay that musicians should receive for the time spent rehearsing and preparing. Of course, and things yeah. Like that. Yeah, and I mean, like I've, I mean, personally, I've never really been concerned about making money off of my original music, which is a very good thing because. It's, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but, <laughs> but you don't want to lose right? money. You'd at least like to like, like break yeah. even. <laughs> yeah, or, you know. yeah. I mean. Because you spent the entire evening, you know, your load in is at five o'clock, but your show's not till eight. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. But but the thing, I mean, the thing that the thing that hurts is like when you're, you know, when you've got a couple local bands who are helping to host a touring band, and it's yeah. and it has become difficult to for for people who tour to justify a stop in Baltimore, mm -hmm. and. There are some Baltimore musicians. Um, a friend of mine, Matt Pless, doesn't want to play. He's from Baltimore, and he doesn't want to play Baltimore anymore. Wow. And and that that's rough, right? And I mean, like like I have friends like you who can play a four hour, a three or four hour bar gig, and and throw in original music, and that's one thing. I mean, I mean, we have a we have a small number of of venues like the cat's eye in yeah. 1919 that are very supportive of really whatever the musicians want to do as right. long as they're making a connection right? right and and i guess as long as they're not getting completely trashed <laughs> on stage but <laughs> which has never happened not gonna to me before never happened, but... <laughs> try, to, try to keep it in check yeah. but there is a need for there is a desire for original music out there and that the thing is that people don't realize they want that until they hear it and that's yeah. why like bringing it and having cat's eye be an opportunity for us to bring that to people yeah to bring both yeah. And, and then people who didn't know they wanted it to hear it and come up to us afterward and say you know i really enjoyed the original songs even even more than the covers because it's so nice to hear refreshing new music um but they don't know that there's a scene out there that they could partake in. Yeah. Because there's a certain places people are used to going to see music and never the twain shall meet. So bridging that gap, starting, it feels pretty good yeah. to yeah. be on, on a path towards that. Yeah. And I, I mean, I honestly, I think it's hard for venues to know that that's a thing, too. I mean, I think we've hit a point in in the musical world where if you don't know a song, it's, you know, it's nothing because nobody know, there's nobody's listening to radio. So like right. nobody yeah. knows anything except maybe some people know the latest Adele or Drake song, <laughs> but like, and, and there's all sorts of things too, where like venues have blind spots. I mean, I think, I think a hip hop act would go over amazingly mm -hmm. at, at, at Psy, but I mean, it's not going to be booked because who can do a four hour, I mean, no one, <laughs> no one can do a four hour hip hop show. It's yeah. too hard on the voice, <laughs> right. but you know, it, it, like when people get up there and do a verse, like it's, it goes over amazingly well in the, right. in the bar. So like every, I mean, every scene has, has some blind spots, but I, but I, mean, I do think that at least the cat's eye is open 
yeah. to try right. like for them right. to yeah. be like, and all right, cancel stamps. Let's see what you can do. You know, like, <laughs> but but I mean, like I'm not, I'm saying they they have fewer blind spots than other venues they that do. just that will like kick you out if you play if you play no. an original song. <laughs> oh right 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 right. Yeah, yeah, there are some venues that really only want the one thing that they yeah. they do. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Uh, another song. <laughs> yeah, this is right, so this ended gonna, up with a little more talking. Yeah, right, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna play <laughs> we're gonna play a song. That's what editing is for. And, you know, we, and we talk about uh, you know some people want to hear songs they know. And I think one of the things that we do in Cancel Stamps pretty well is we write hooky songs. So mm-hmm. hopefully by the time you get to the end of it, you feel like you know it. Yeah. And this is one of those. It's like one of our earliest songs, and it's very simple. Um, I have fun playing. I think it. it's sing a sing sing alongable yeah. song. So. Absolutely. Ready? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm cloudy in the morning, so I caffeinate. Clear my head, I clean my windshield, and I'm on my changeover in the middle too thanks yeah <laughs> we got a tendency to put in bridges and things that change the feel or the mm-hmm. even the time signature Lots of the pauses. Tempo and yeah gotta keep the element of surprise <laughs> <laughs> it was surprising <laughs> um okay so i'm gonna do my cover oh great but i don't know i put two in here and i'm not sure which one to do so i mm. So I've got a I've got a concrete blonde song and yes. and a Jillian Welch song. Oh yes, that too. <laughs> so many choices. But which Jillian Welch one. is it? Uh, Hard times. Oh, and which uh, concrete blonde? Joey. I mean, <sighs> you know. Okay. Well, that's a tough one. Which one are you feeling in your heart today? Um, I'm, I think probably hard times. It. I don't know. 
I'm doing a lot of downbeat stuff anyway, so I'm gonna stop. I'm, I'm <laughs> well, just, we're bringing all the upbeat stuff. <laughs> I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna apologize for it today. Oh, no, that's right. It's, like, it's a dreary, it's a dreary day. Yeah. We need some sunshine. I'm so ready for the sun. I liked. I, I like. Um, I like dreary days. It was a great surprise to me to learn that some people like sunshine. <laughs> I like dreary days if I can stay in my covers and I can have a pajama day and like mm, stay cocoa. warm and toasty. But if I got to be out and about in it, I do not like it. It's, it's not my quote. <laughs> <laughs> but it is very fitting. I learned it today. And I was, I was oh. like, oh, how very descriptive of me. <laughs> <laughs> was a camp town man used to plow and sing he loved that mule and the mule loved him when the day got long as it does about now i'd hear him singing to his muley cow saying come on you sweet old girl I bet the whole wide world that we're gonna make it, yeah, to the end of the road. Singing hard times ain't gonna rule my mind. Hard times ain't gonna rule. My mind, Bessie, hard times ain't gonna rule my mind no more. And it's a mean old world, heavy and neat. That big machine is just a picking up speed. There was something on tears and something on wine. We all get to heaven in our own sweet time. So come on, you Asheville boys. Pick up your old time noise. Kick till the dust comes up. From the cracks in the floor Say hard times Ain't gonna rule my mind Hard times Ain't gonna rule my mind Brother, hard times Ain't gonna rule my mind No more plow no more I see him walking down to the cigarette store guess he lost that knack and forgot that song woke up a morning and the mule was gone so come on you ragtime kings come on you dolls and sing pick up your dusty old horn and give it a blow and say hard times ain't gonna rule my mind hard times ain't gonna rule my mind sugar hard times Hang on a whole my 
mind no more yeah oh she can write some good songs yeah yeah, she's a she's a talent man if you're right in the feels every time yeah they released some stuff during the pandemic that was just like backlogs of, of songs just like these throwaway things yeah. and it's like and every single one of them i'm like holy crap <laughs> i want to write throw some throwaways like that. <laughs> you don't want to hear my throw yeah. <laughs> they just throw like, it away thank, for a good reason <laughs> thanks for the complex <laughs> that was really nice uh, mm-hmm. i also That's wanted to say like that guitar sounds so great yeah. and it's just such a lovely instrument and you play it really well. Yeah. And that was the first song you played. You were hitting some really deep bends on it, and I was like, "Holy smokes! Like I cannot bend the strings on my guitar <laughs> like that." This one's a long scale too. I mean, it's like it's a little harder. Mm-hmm. It depends on where you bend them, I guess. Just- oh yeah, we're gonna tune before we do our next one because yeah. uh, there's a capo involved. And- you might not realize you want us to tune, but believe me, <laughs> you do want us you to do tune. Want that to happen. It's okay. I can speed up this portion of the video. It'll make it look like you're like super fast at tuning. That would be like, amazing. <laughs> I, I know. You're going to be like, <laughs> <laughs> look done. at me tune. <laughs> now we can still talk. I just wanted to have it done so that we weren't like, oh, and we're going to play now. Crap, you know? <laughs> and have it be wildly out of tune. This is what professionals look like. <laughs> <laughs> look at us go. So yeah, what's happening now? Uh, uh, so we've got a song up yeah. next called Little Girl. This is um, one that Shannon had the inspiration for. Yeah, a friend of mine was going through a pretty rough uh, divorce, and I had gone through you know, a pretty bad breakup at some point. And I think that like um, uh, a, a lot of women in their lives, probably men in their lives, have also been in similar situations where you're, you're kind of gaslit. <laughs> mm. You know, you're told one thing, but especially for women growing up, like, you're taught to behave a certain way and to not question. And it was something I had to learn, relearn as an adult. Like, no, 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 you are supposed to say, no, no, this isn't okay. Yeah. And so this this song's called Little Girl, and it, it's written back to that young person that, you know, you're not going to win this battle. <laughs> it's not your fault. Um, sometimes people just aren't as, as kind as they should be. So. And with that yeah. preface, let's, yeah. uh, let's do it. Are you ready? Yep. All right. One, two. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Can you hear it? I didn't, I, no, but... Yeah, it was yeah. pretty bad. So it's buzzing a bit. Yeah. This capo is not loving me. Oops. All right. All right, that's better. Do you not use capos, Jen? <laughs> I do on some songs, but since... Um, in our in canceled stamps, we mostly I play electric guitars. Yeah. Um, if there's a song that Shannon typically capos on, I try to just play it in the original key, but you know, play it up higher on the neck or that that sort of thing, and um, it gives it a little more dimension. So yeah, I do have capos. I I, I, I lose them like it's my job. <laughs> I, I think I lost most of capos too. Yeah. They are a line. <laughs> Shannon's <item>. capos. <laughs> All right. Are you ready? Yep. Sorry One, about two. that. It's okay. One, two, three, one, two, three. Remember 
to smile and nod Don't give your thoughts on God Paint those pretty lips Wear that skirt that clings to your hips Trust makes you seem weak One day you'll understand What it takes to please this man Give all you have Take none You're the moon He's the sun One day you'll understand That you can't please this man That's one of my favorite solos that Jen's written. Yeah, I, I love the I love the dissonance. In it. It's, like it's it's, it's, it's like crazy. it spoke it's, the same yeah. words, but just with music. Yeah. I'd like to say like I was. It just came to me, but I was listening to a lot of Alice in Chains. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna. I was, I was actually gonna ask about influences because yeah, yeah, yeah. like like during warm up, you were playing Jethro Jethro Tull. I mean, obviously, oh, right. you play tons of '90s stuff. But, yeah, I mean, like, yeah. Like, as far as guitarists, I mean, do you have any major influences, or is it... I mean, also, it, you have some classical technique, too, so I don't know if that was just what you were taught when you were younger. Um, yeah, I, mean, I, played, I played saxophone when I was a kid, so, oh, okay. you know, there's there's that influence, like, on in, in me as a musician. But as far as guitarists that I follow, like, I've always been more of somebody that follows bands than individual musicians. So, But if I had to pick some specific guitarists, certainly, like... Anna knows what I'm about to say. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Slash <laughs> because I think he writes guitar solos that are very melodic and singable and memorable. Yeah. And that is something that I strive to do. And I, I'm always trying to remember to like not overdo it and write a good melody in a solo and not try to impress people with speed. Not that I could anyway, but like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you could. <laughs> but like, <laughs> just trying to remember that a, a solo doesn't have to be a time to show off. It's a time for whatever is needed in that song to happen. And I feel like that Slash is a guitarist and somebody that had added that to um, Guns N' Roses in a really special way. Um, I'm also a big fan of Nuno ben Bedencore. I was a huge Extreme fan when I was, uh, I don't know, 12, <laughs> 13, around there. He did this song on the Porno Graffiti album called Flight of the Wounded Bumblebee. And it's this very, like, lots of delay, and it's this very fast, like, uh, sort of adaptation of Flight of, Flight of the Bumblebee. Um, that I, I used to listen to it over and over, over rewind my cassette and play it and rewind it and play it and just like <laughs> fantasize that someday I might be able to, I still have never played it, but you know, <laughs> yeah. But as far as influences go, like band wise, I've always liked, as we were kind of just bring us back to what we were talking about earlier, bands where the, the idea is not that there's a songwriter and then a band around them, but like the band is responsible for the music. So Blind Melon is a big influence in my life um, or the, for the short period of time in which they exist, existed and yeah right <laughs> except for that song that song can that song like, go away <laughs> um, but yeah um, all of their albums were like all songs by Blind Melon Blind Melon is a band and that was something as a younger person as a teenager like I took to heart and was like yes that is the way I want my music to be like all songs are by whatever mm -hmm. band I'm in equally you know responsible for that yeah, because you could say, like, I wrote this song, but, like, 
the band contributes so much. Right. Like, yeah. I didn't write the drums. I didn't write the bass line. I didn't write the lead guitar. Like, <laughs> His arrangements are what makes the song right. special. So, yeah, I might have put some words yeah, down. but Copyright law is ill-equipped to handle yeah. contributions of individual musicians to the arrangement of a song. Yeah. Well, it's really up to those musicians to how they want to yeah. claim ownership of those songs, right? So if a band says, you know, we're we're going to split everything evenly, right? We decided early on that we're going to no mark ourselves what, all the songwriters be Beatles. equally, right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Lennon or McCartney. Yeah, I mean, I mean, no, we're not going to make a million bucks. We're also not going to be the Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really a moot point, anyway. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like like the last record, anyone who played a part. Got a got a songwriting credit right. for for us, but like I mean, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, yeah. There's no money, <laughs> so, <laughs> right? What are you gonna like, get? Huh? Like they can have all the money. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your two dollars. Here's, Here's your two dollars. <laughs> Just take everyone out to out for a drink, and it yeah, eats right. up the whole year's profits. <laughs> yeah. Here's your like eight hundredths of a cent from your year of Spotify. Listen, well, we take all our um, cover birds stuff and we put it back into like equipment or yeah. what have you i mean what about what about you shannon i mean as far as like influences, influences? i mean um, i could go by what by what each of you sings lead on and, and cover cover so words, what would you guess? Like, yeah. <laughs> um yeah like uh you know i love the 80s <laughs> i love the 80s i was a child of the 80s um so yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much. Um, so you know, Bauhaus. Uh, you know, I love Peter Murphy, um, The Cure, The Smiths. Although I'm embarrassed to admit it um, now, you know, so many of my my wonderful <laughs> musicians that I loved when I was a child have gone completely crazy right right wing. I don't understand, but um, but also Bob Dylan, singer songwriter, like. You know, um, Sinead O'Connor. Uh, so I, I think I was more influenced lyrically because that's how I got to come to music. And I didn't start playing until I was almost 40. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, I think I was 38 when I got, you know, this guitar was my 40th birthday present from, you know, my folks and Sean. So, um, yeah, I came to it. I started at the Hootenanny. That's how I learned to play. Mm -hmm. At the Hoot Nanny, and um, and then I started playing with other people, and I started playing with Jen, and she taught me a ton. But you were a singer before that, right? No, no, I never sang. I never spoke a word. Like you I would sing along, or like I would know. sing along. I loved to sing, but I was very. I'm very shy. It took us. A, it took me when we started playing, and we got Pete involved doing the drums, and we got D in there. Like I didn't think we were going to play outside of my living room. Like, and then, but Jen's like, no, we wrote some songs and he's got, you <laughs> the know. The whole point. Like, yeah, the whole point is to people. play. <laughs> we had to practice in front of garages, like in, in front of Pete's garage, like to get me to be on the microphone. Now I'm like, ah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, I need more me. I need more me. <laughs> I can't hear myself. <laughs> but yeah, no, this gift came late in life for me. Should give everyone some I don't, I don't know if it should give everyone hope or or make us all despair, those of us who can't learn things <laughs> later in life. <laughs> it's hard. It's much harder. Yeah. You know, I don't have my, I look, I, I still have trouble with bar chords. People are like, why can't, I'm like, I start, I'm like, oh, I'm old already. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> my fingers don't like this. Yeah. There, I mean, there's some things as, as an adult, I mean, at least for me, I have a better idea of how I learn things now mm -hmm. and I've gotten much better at learning things even more recently. Right. But I mean, there's absolutely something to be said about 30 years of, of muscle memory. Oh right? yeah. I <laughs> so. definitely don't have that. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know. All right. Um, I'm going to do, I'm going to do a nice little love song. I don't write very many positive love songs. <laughs> I don't write very many positive songs. I don't either. It makes me feel any better. I'm like, uh, the sadder the better. <laughs> this is called Be My Star. And um, I didn't write a lot of lyrics this this February. I wrote, I wrote a lot of instrumental Celtic stuff. But I wrote a few sets of lyrics, and some of them I actually like. 
<laughs> Some of them need work. Um, but that's what Joe's for. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not not his kind of stuff. Though. No, that's, um, that's the problem. But this one, um, I I felt like there was a little bit of a cliche thing going on, and and sometimes I think I, I think it's it's very hard in the moment to separate um, just honesty from cliche at times, and I don't I don't know. It's one of those things too where it's like I I think it's very easy to take something like like what this is and maybe maybe go a little too too big on it so this was so i i made i made a really really big attempt to keep it as small and honest as possible <laughs> um and i kind of liked how it came out but uh yeah so it's called be my star sounds nice <laughs> Say goodbye To the last day of spring The grass grows fast and green in summer flashing like the star upon your ring I'm counting every heartbeat while I can and I might be gone a thousand miles or more and every day fear the stars might disappear but it's not so far if I know where you so my darling until then be my star be my star until I met you I was dusty boots and lyrics I never could have bothered standing still it takes a few Rose to hit the mark or near it. You can call it luck or call it what you will. And I might be gone a thousand miles or more. And every day fear the stars might disappear. And that's not so far. If I know where you are so my darling until then be my star be my star maybe the whole world is your oyster Maybe you're still looking for the talisman to grant the luck you need. And I could wish for every treasure, for every question's answer, but I think I could guess what they might be. And I might be gone a thousand miles or more. And every time fear the stars might disappear It's not so far If I know where you are So my darling until then Be my star Be my star Well you should write more like happy songs. That was no, lovely. Nice. That's nice. <laughs> I, I can. I use up all the happiness every time I do. That's it, it's only enough for that one song. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a battery. Another ten years very, before you write another one. <laughs> very slow charging battery. Yeah. <laughs> I really liked how and I noticed this right in the very beginning, um, that it a lot of the song is in the lower end of your vocal range and you have a really lovely quality to your voice when you hit those those lowest notes that I thought was um, vulnerable and um, 
Lovely. Oh, thanks. Yeah. I actually, I wrote it in C and then dropped it a whole step. I mean, at the time, it was because I was getting over a cold, but, <laughs> but I decided to keep it there. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> so it was really nice. Well, we have more songs to play. Yeah, I was yeah, gonna, I was gonna ask if you would do two in a row. I mean, yeah, sure. I normally people only do five, right? But, um, but I was gonna ask you guys to do six today because you know it's evenly split for the for the lead vocals that way. <laughs> totally, it works for us. I mean, I know you, I know you two sing sing together a lot, but it's it's nice to it's nice to balance things out. So I was yeah. I was just gonna ask if you would do two in a row. Sure, we totally can. So yeah, we've got two songs that we can put right next to each other. The first yeah. one is called "All I Can See," and um, I'll be singing on that one primarily, though we both sing on all of yeah. them. Yeah, we both sing on everything. <laughs> and it's kind of about getting older and wondering if you're ever gonna figure it out. Uh, I think, and then. Um, the one after that is Leave in Town, which is uh, Shannon will do the, the primary singing on. Yeah. So here we go. Are you ready? Yep. had a little too much caffeine on <laughs> that was faster yeah. than normal but yeah. <laughs> i made it through <laughs> really fastly <laughs> uh, all right um so leave in town nope. <laughs> that was a that was a tough time in, in life <laughs> right yeah this is, this is a yeah. debut of this song acoustically i don't yeah, think we've ever done an acoustic version of it yeah. for people before or for ourselves prior to two days ago so yeah. <laughs> here we go who knew Yes. Don't speed, Jen. <laughs> Very strong tea. <laughs> Around without pride, 
I was leaving town. We, we did that. <laughs> I, I love the little bird song in there. Thanks. Right? I love that too. <laughs> that, was, that was fantastic. <laughs> Thanks. So, sometimes those little things. I remember when I was in college, I had a professor tell me, to tell our, our class that, um, you know, that that's the Joker. Like, I'm a Joker. I'm a smoker. I'm a midnight. And there's like a wolf whistle that happens. Yeah. Whoop, and he's whoop. like, the, the song, like, before that wolf whistle, like, nobody cared about it at all. And then, like, that was added in and it became, like, this whole new thing. I think you're really good at uh, making the guitar uh, speak lyrics. Thanks. Like, I think, like, it's I think... because of Slash. <laughs> <laughs> But it's the same thing you do in Little Girl, the same thing with Leaving Town. Like, you find these moments to, like, um, raise up the lyrics and raise up the music, and that's nice. Thank you. Yeah. Well, it's easy to do when there's a, a good song to build, build yeah, off of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so my last piece for the day is going to be a, a, an instrumental. Awesome. Um, so I wrote a bunch of these this year, and... This one I actually wrote out the whole guitar arrangement, but I don't I didn't do that with everything because it's it's very, very time consuming. <laughs> but um yeah, I mean I uh I am primarily a songwriter. <laughs> I mean, I do practice guitar and and instruments in general, but but um there was a pretty long stretch of my life where I didn't practice learning um actual arrangements of things and um and only very only much more recently like the last several years or so, last few four or five years or so have i been doing anything that you could really term chord melody like I, like i've i've done this thing for years where like i'm i'll drone notes because that's like you know it's kind of like bagpipe type things um but and and some guitarists I like tend to like do that. Like Richard Thompson does that a lot for for the same reason for because of bagpipes. But um, 
but I, I don't know. It, it was like a big hole in my in my guitar repertoire to to learn actual chord melody type arrangements. And I so I did it with some jazz songs. And I mean, I really like Celtic music. So more recently, I started doing it with Celtic music, and then decided to try and do this for February this year. And <laughs> normally, I'll take a week to learn like to learn a tune, <laughs> like. Like, like at least a couple days depending on the type of tune and and it takes a very long time to build it up to speed and this is like everything compressed down to two days and i was like and about halfway through the month i was like holy crap what am i doing to myself but this one <laughs> this one i mean some some of them were slower like this one and you know they're also ones that i can i can kind of pull out at the last minute and expect to be able to play them and <laughs> in, in, in a concert but but like but in this case i wrote this one at 12 30 at night wow. <laughs> while, while Lex Lexa was out with some friends and and finished it at like and finished it at like 1 30 in the morning or something <laughs> wow and I mean I think I'd started writing it before then but I think I finally hit record at like 12 30 and at night and um it's called waterfowl on Lake Montebello so Lake Montebello is uh -huh. a is a reservoir in Baltimore down the street and um I mean, like any like any open body of water, there are ducks and geese on it. And I don't know. I was I wrote a lot about water this year, so this was this was one I liked. the geese wow <laughs> i really enjoyed that oh, thanks. neat to hear you know like yeah, that sort of like uh, um way that what did you call it like chord chord theory or something chord like, melody chord yeah. melody yeah like that was it's just so nice it tells a story without words you get the richness of like the chord but like 
nice, mm-hmm. you know, sort of individual melody on top of it at the same time by one person in two hands. It's just really <laughs> neat. We need we need both of us to do anything. I just, <laughs> <laughs> but you do this part, and I'll do this on top of it. I don't know. You take on a lot of parts, <laughs> especially when it's just the two of us. I'm like, I can do one thing at a time, John. You do six. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So All right. Yeah, we've got one, one. One to go. So yeah, the, our final song is this one. Uranium. It's yeah. called Uranium. How did the? How did that? Sl- <laughs> oh yeah, we were. Did we, it start we, out as the as the bomb metaphor? Or did no, it? no. Uh-huh. This is almost all of the songs that we've each written. I think the lyrics to are um, are very personal. Except this one. <laughs> this one came, we were just messing we're just around with and, this, like, yeah. In riff. band practice one day, and, like, this kind of riff happened. And uh-huh. We it sat around for a couple of months, and Pete kept asking, what are we going to do something <laughs> with that? And I was like, oh, I'll try to write some words to it. And I, I thought of um, some people I knew and a relationship that was very, like, tumultuous <laughs> between them. And I liked the sound of the word uranium and the way in which it was working with the, the like, sort of pattern we had come up with and so that's where like the like it's more this is a much more like intentional like sort of formulaic and not as personal song as most of the other ones but i think it's fun and hooky it is but it misses a little bit um doing it acoustically like there's definitely some drums like there's other pause like that we do it differently with a live band I see. That, yeah that <laughs> it makes it i think yeah, the acoustic Different, version is yeah. good, but the full band version, yeah. you can find it on Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> and you should. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's another yeah. animal. All right. You nope. All right. One, two,
That's uranium. <laughs> oh. Uh, so you mentioned that song's on Spotify. Was there was there a whole EP or 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 a whole album up? Uh, I forget. Yeah, we've got I, a bunch of stuff on Spotify. Yeah. Okay. Like yeah. three three records, one full length, and two like EPs. We had some early recording. Yeah. Um, so we're some of those we're going to re-record. We're hoping to put out, but you can definitely like get them now, listen to them now. Yeah. But the Uranium record is uh, is awesome. Yes. It's got six songs on it, and then we just put out a three song. I guess you could call it a single. Yeah. Um, okay. The, I, I was trying to remember which I was trying to remember which, which one Uranium was on. But yeah. The, on, the record is yeah. called Uranium. Yeah. yeah. yeah so. <laughs> Dreams in the Dust is on that one too. Yeah. Oh right, that's when we did it. Uh, Magpie. Yeah. Mag. Yeah, okay. And all I can see is on that one too. Yep. Um. So I know a few other places. People can follow you. There, there's a Facebook page for the band. Um, yep. Uh, anywhere else, like in particular? We have a website. We have a website. It's cancelledstampsmusic.com. Um, we're also on Bandcamp, canceledstamps.bandcamp.com. You can hear all our music there, too. And if you wanted to pay for it, you're welcome to. Like, I, I, think, they're, I think they're all up there for free, but like it's yeah. a donate if you want kind of situation. Um, I don't know. It's been a while since I've looked at it. <laughs> it's a labor of love. <laughs> and then, yeah, Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music, anything you might use to listen to streaming music, we should be on all of them. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for Thank you for, thank you for having us. This has been super songs. fun and, and delicious tea as well. <laughs> yeah. And fantastic. we met a very handsome cat. <laughs> <laughs> That's Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> the king. <laughs> King of the Mittens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this has been really lovely. Thank you yeah. so much for inviting us to participate. And, and thank you again for, for agreeing to do this. Of course. This. Totally. Our pleasure. Um, right. So the next scheduled show after this, um, I'm, I'm trying to remember who it is. And I'm, <laughs> I'm feeling very unprepared, but there, there, will, be a, there will be something on the, on the end card for, for the, next, uh, the next one coming up. The the last show of the season is is supposed to be um, my my friend Radiation Puppy, uh, which is Chris Hamilton and his band. But um, but there are a few lost episodes. If you're wondering if you're wondering where the Ammonite show went, um, uh, Aaron and I could not figure out how to schedule something for her trio before before I went away for a couple weeks oh. so um and she was she was getting over um a pretty bad cold so um so I I now have I now have multiple lost episodes um so so we're gonna we're gonna try and figure out when to when to record the Ammonite show that was supposed to be in in March um this is of course airing at the beginning of of April but um but yeah, I I hope everyone enjoyed the show, and I hope you'll tune in uh, again if you're if you're just joining us for the first time. There's a whole there's a whole archive of these for this year. Um, lots of other amazing artists, and thank you very much for watching. Bye, everyone.